asteroid strikes and very dangerous and they render things extinct. For me, that's the greatest existential threat and what I worry about most. And your next question was, oh, the asteroid. Oh, you worried about the asteroid. We plow through several hundred tons of meteors a day. Imagine that one beautiful day, scientists at observatories confirm that a massive asteroid is heading toward Earth. In size, it's comparable to the Empire State Building and hurtling at over 16,000 miles per hour. Governments worldwide must urgently agree on how to stop this threat. The world holds its breath, knowing that any wrong move could rewrite history. Don't think for a moment that this scenario is unlikely. This is precisely what happened in 2020 when renowned. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson announced on Instagram that a fridge-sized space, rock named asteroid 2018 VP1 was racing toward us at speeds exceeding 25,000 miles per hour. Did you hear about this asteroid when it was discovered? No. It could have swiped Earth on November 2nd, one day before the elections. Fortunately, the asteroid was too small to cause harm. But what if it were larger? What would have happened if it had indeed struck Earth? But before we delve into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to not miss our new videos. Collisions of asteroids and comets with Earth are often considered as one of the possible reasons for human extinction. Our planet has endured impacts from six asteroids, each with a diameter of at least six miles. Massive craters on Earth's surface scattered across different parts of the world bear witness to these events. So the question is not whether a collision will occur, but when it will happen again and will we be prepared? Now about asteroid 2018 VP1. It was first discovered in 2018 by NASA's Near-Earth Object Observations Program, which tracks and monitors asteroids and comets that could pose a threat to our planet. The asteroid has a diameter of about 6.5 feet and a very low probability of entering our atmosphere. In fact, according to NASA's estimates, the chances of it happening are only 0.41%. Even if it were to occur, the asteroid would disintegrate in the upper layers of our atmosphere, creating an impressive fireball in the sky. So why did Neil deGrasse Tyson alert us to this? Well, he wasn't trying to scare us, but rather wanted to raise awareness about the importance of studying asteroids and their potential impacts. He also wanted to emphasize that the news of the asteroid was overshadowed by other events in 2020, such as the pandemic, the U.S. presidential elections, and other occurrences. He stated that we should not ignore the threat of asteroids because they could have devastating consequences for all life on Earth. However, the asteroid threat is not something new. In fact, scientists have been tracking and studying near-Earth objects for decades, trying to identify and characterize those that pose potential risks to our planet. So, December 2004. One of the most well-known examples of such an object is asteroid Apophis, discovered in 2004 by astronomers from the Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona. Apophis has a diameter of about 1 to 100 feet, roughly equal to three football fields. We discover an asteroid. It was going to hit Earth on April 13th, 2036. So, Apophis, a massive asteroid named after the ancient Egyptian god of chaos and darkness. The name was chosen because of its calculated trajectory, which seemed to be on a collision course with Earth. However, much like asteroid 2018 VP1, the news about Apophis didn't receive much attention from the public or the media. On December 26, 2004, just two days after Apophis was discovered, a powerful earthquake struck in the Indian Ocean, triggering a devastating tsunami that claimed the lives of over 200,000 people in 14 countries. The world's attention was focused on this humanitarian crisis, and the asteroid threat was largely ignored. To further the story, it's essential to note the immense scale and devastation caused by this tsunami. The powerful earthquake, which occurred off the coast of Sumatra in Indonesia, released more energy than all the explosives used in World War II combined. Furthermore, it shifted the Earth's axis by about an inch and shortened the day by 0.68 microseconds. But despite the earthquake triggering the tsunami, a similar scenario could unfold with an asteroid impact. In fact, some scientists believe that an asteroid impact could cause the largest tsunami in our planet's history. Have you heard of the infamous Chicxulub impact that occurred 66 million years ago, crashing into the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico? Well, it's widely believed that this impact, caused by a six-mile-wide asteroid, wiped out dinosaurs and most other life forms on Earth. But what would happen if a similar asteroid collided with us today? According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL calculations, if Apophis falls within the center of the uncertainty range, it will land in the Pacific Ocean west of Santa Monica, California. 
The impact would create a crater approximately three miles wide and half a mile deep. So much energy would be released that it would be equivalent to 880 million tons of TNT. That's more than 65,000 times the power of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson, this would generate a tsunami wave that keeps repeating. But these waves wouldn't behave like regular waves crashing on the shore. Instead, they would be more akin to walls of water that continue arriving every 40-50 seconds after the impact. But that's not all. The impact would also trigger a powerful tsunami that would spread across the Pacific Ocean at speeds of up to hundreds of miles per hour. The tsunami would reach heights of approximately three miles above sea level. That's comparable to the height of Mount Everest, and this tsunami wouldn't be just one wave. It would be a series of waves that repeat more than 40 times, causing significant damage to the entire western coast of the United States and beyond. In other words, if Apophis were to collide with Earth in 2036, it would create a scenario similar to, or even worse than, the 2004 tsunami. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson, the impact of Apophis would likely cause damages estimated at around $10 trillion along the western coast of the United States alone. That's more than half of the U.S. gross domestic product, GDP, in 2020. It would also affect millions of people living and working in coastal cities such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Vancouver, and others. The economic and social consequences would be enormous and long-lasting. Human casualties from these tsunamis would also be staggering. According to scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, these tsunamis could kill up to 10 million people along the western coast of the United States. That's more than the population of Los Angeles. And this doesn't account for the millions of people who would be injured, displaced, or affected by the aftermath of the disaster. But as Neil deGrasse Tyson said in his video, Unfortunately, most people don't realize how serious the asteroid threat is. But how likely is it that Earth will collide with an asteroid in the near future? In 2004, when scientists discovered Apophis, the probability of its collision with Earth in 2029 was rated as 4 on the Torino scale. The collision probability was ruled out through pre-discovery images. And now this level is at O. But that doesn't mean Apophis is not interesting or important. In fact, Apophis will come close to Earth on Friday, April 13th, 2029, around 5.46 p.m. Coordinated Universal Time or 1.46 p.m. Eastern Time. And this will be a very close encounter! Apophis will reach its closest point to Earth at a distance of about 19,000 miles. That's closer than the Moon, whose average orbit is about 238,000 miles. It's also closer than some geostationary satellites, which orbit at a distance of about 22,000 miles. Moreover, there's even a possibility of Apophis colliding with an artificial satellite, since it will pass below their orbits. However, practically speaking, such a close approach is very useful for astronomers. Firstly, it's a rare opportunity to observe and study an asteroid up close. Secondly, it's a chance to test our capabilities and technologies for detecting and deflecting asteroids. And thirdly, it's a stress test for some satellites and spacecraft that might be in Apophis's path. A sort of cosmic crash test. And if no jokes on this day, Apophis will be visible in the Eastern Hemisphere. Asia, Africa, and some European countries as a bright star moving across the sky. It will shine as brightly as stars in the constellation Ursa Minor. Apophis is indeed a very bright and reflective asteroid with an albedo of O23. This means it reflects about 23% of the sunlight falling on it. Moreover, it's also very fast with a speed of about 19 miles per second. However, despite its brightness and speed, Apophis has an uncertain orbit that could change in the future. This is due to a phenomenon called the Yarkovsky effect caused by the uneven heating and cooling of the asteroid during its rotation and orbit around the Sun. This effect can create tiny forces that will gradually change the asteroid's trajectory. In Apophis's case, this effect could lead to it passing through a gravitational keyhole in 2029, which is a small region in space where Earth's gravity could pull the asteroid and alter its orbit. Not long ago, this probability wasn't all that low, but recent observations have effectively ruled out this scenario. The likelihood of Apophis passing through the gravitational keyhole in 2029 has been determined to be extremely low. Likewise, the possibility of Apophis colliding with Earth in 2036 is also very slim. According to Don Yeomans, the head of the Near-Earth Object Program Office at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, even with all possible trajectory changes after the 2029 close approach, the probability of a collision in 2036 is one in a million. 
So according to NASA's calculations, if the hypothetical threat is confirmed in 2036, there will be ample time to take measures. In 2068, a collision is also unlikely. Our calculations show that there is no such threat for the next hundred years, said David Farnokia, a scientist at NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies. So is the apocalypse averted? Neil deGrasse Tyson likened the chance of a collision to winning the lottery or being struck by lightning. He also compared it to the risks people face every day, like driving a car or flying on an airplane. He said we shouldn't fear asteroids, but should instead learn about them and prepare for them. To better understand asteroids, NASA is redirecting its OSIRIS-REx spacecraft toward Apophis. This is the same spacecraft that spectacularly delivered a capsule with asteroid samples to Earth. After completing its current mission on the asteroid Bennu, OSIRIS-REx will be renamed OSIRIS-Apophis Explorer, OSIRIS-APEX, and will be redirected to encounter Apophis during its flyby of Earth in 2029. OSIRIS Apex will go into orbit around Apophis shortly after the flyby, allowing for a close-up view of the asteroid and an examination of how its encounter with Earth has affected its orbit, rotation speed, and surface. So, scientists worldwide are working on the asteroid issue, and one example is the DART mission, which you may have already heard about in my other video. By the way, in the 20th and 21st centuries, there's only one known case of a meteorite hitting a person, and she survived. On November 30th, 1954, the ceiling in the house of 34-year-old Anne Elizabeth Hodges was pierced by a nine-pound meteorite. The stone bounced off a radio receiver and hit her on the thigh, leaving a massive bruise. The likelihood of such a small meteorite hitting a person is incredibly low. But space is full of wonders and dangers, and we must realize the global impact that truly massive asteroids can have on our planet and our civilization. I hope Murphy's Law won't apply to Apophis, which states, Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. What are your thoughts on this? Be sure to share your ideas in the comments.